Joining us now from Nagra Health, we have the Director of Infectious Diseases, Dr. Kareem Ali. Welcome to the program, Dr. Ali. Thank you for having me. In your Thank capacity, we can talk a little bit about the science, I guess, behind COVID-19. How has this disease progressed during this time from its, if we go back to the first mentions of the coronavirus, this unknown thing to most of the world, when did people like you get involved in studying it? This is an excellent question. And the way, the way I see this, if we don't know where we started, we won't know where we are going to go, right? Um, we have always known, or at least since 1965, we have known about coronaviruses, okay? Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses that um, uh, are primarily uh, originated or they circulate in bats, okay? Um, there are certain human coronaviruses that circulate as cause of a common cold uh, during cold and flu season. 15%, um, the thought is about 15% of common colds can actually be due to uh, coronaviruses. But these are very distinct viruses than um, the more notorious or, uh, uh, coronaviruses that have been in the news, okay? So the, the first one or the most uh, notorious one that we learned about first was SARS-CoV-1 or the, the first uh, SARS epidemic in uh, 2003 and 4. There is another circulating coronavirus uh, called uh, uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus uh, that uh, circulates uh, within uh, the camel populations in Middle East and jumps over into humans. And then this SARS-CoV-2, or the causative organ, the causative uh, uh, virus for uh, uh, COVID-19. Okay, um, the thought is this likely originated, or it has been circulating in bats, and it spilled over into human population somewhere back in uh, um, October of 2019. Okay, right. and I, I guess the life-changing moment that we in infectious disease world had was uh, um, I distinctly remember reading that alert that was sent out to WHO on uh, uh, December 20, uh, December 30th, uh, 31st, 2019, so New Year's Eve, uh, that there was a cluster of cases of pneumonia, unidentified viral pneumonia in Wuhan, uh, in Hubei province, China. Initially, the thought was it actually originated there at the seafood market. But now, and the thought is that seafood market was likely an amplifying event where there were a lot of people in close contact. So that's how that cluster originated. And originally, it was likely going back. Okay, And this has sort of borne out to be true now uh, when we see uh, clusters of uh, people or clusters of infected people within a closed space, right? Like be it long-term care, be it you know, um, uh, certain outbreaks in, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, gatherings of uh, of uh, certain people, okay? Which is why so it's so important for us to maintain the social distancing. What what makes it so contagious? Because that obviously is the big factor here and why we've changed the way we've been living since March 13th. The issue here uh, of this contagiousness is the fact that nobody has any immunity to this, right? So just like uh, this coronavirus is originated in bats. Influenza viruses that circulate, they are actually bird viruses, right? Uh, we tend to have some immunity, somewhat immune, immune to, to uh, influenza viruses. But again, a novel virus comes in and we have no immunity. This virus is relatively new to human population and it's trying to be, trying to set up in the human population. That's why it is so... Um, uh, the reason it's so contagious is it's very easily spread from droplets from uh, our uh, nose and mouth in the respiratory secretions. Okay. Dr. Ali, earlier this week, some positive news about testing with a vaccine that is showing some positive signs in the lab. How soon do you think we will have a vaccine and will that vaccine help us move back into the regular way of life that we were used to before March? There are um, upwards of 140 vaccines uh, that are uh, being developed, okay? And, uh, you know, vaccine in, of, in and of itself are, 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 are a whole new topic. 
I want to make sure that we don't put all our eggs in that basket. As it stands right now, we have no vaccine against any coronavirus. So realistically speaking, we are likely looking at uh, something next year. Okay, so this would be key. Right now, it's the key. Uh, the key message would be we physically distance. We wear a mask when we are indoors and we wash our hands properly. Right as it stands today, that's the only way to control things. With the province announcing some areas moving into what they're calling stage three, allowing for larger gatherings, uh, restaurants being able to open up indoors, welcome people indoors. Are you afraid that, you know, people are not taking the necessary steps when they step into those environments? So I obviously it does concern me a little bit, but I also want to make sure that we actually enjoy um, uh, the fruits of our, our sacrifice, right? Like Canadians, we as Canadians have made a lot of uh, sacrifices in crushing this curve, so to speak. Um, yes, it does worry me just a little bit, but again, the key message would be if we are enjoying it, we have to make sure we are physically distancing, we are wearing a mask and washing our hands. So these three things would be the key.